Alright everyone, recently there seems to be a trend of people moving from Windows and switching to Mac OS X. As with anything new, there's going to be a learning curve involved and today I'm just going to share with you some things you should know about in order to make the transition as seamless and as easy as possible. One of the most annoyingly inconsistent behaviors in Mac OS X is the concept of restoring and maximizing Windows. In this example, I have three separate web browsers open. Firefox 3, Camino, and Safari. And each of these takes the concept of maximizing the application differently. The default behavior in Mac OS X is to get rid of any horizontal scrolling bars that may appear. So when I go to click the green maximize button in Safari, the application will not fill the entire screen and the only thing that does happen is that the horizontal scrolling bar disappears. If I go to click the green button again, it'll just bring the window back to its original position. And once again, you'll notice that the horizontal bar appears on the bottom. So in Safari, there is no way to fully maximize a window. Now, if you come over to Camino, for instance, once again, they take the uh, general philosophy of Mac OS X and clicking the green button will get rid of the horizontal scrolling bar. Clicking it again will restore it and bring back the horizontal scroll. Now there is a way to actually fill the entire screen and in Camino if you want to make your window full size all you have to do is hold down the shift key, press the green button and Camino will fill the entire screen. Trying to do the same thing in Safari, for instance, doesn't work. And I can click with the Shift button, with the Alt button, or even with the Command button, or Control button. No button combination that I'm aware of makes Safari fill the entire screen. And really, when you want to focus on one thing or on one window, it's not the most elegant of solutions. Firefox 3 seems to be the most consistent with Windows behavior because it is a cross-platform browser by design and it does have to interoperate on OS X, Windows, and Linux. And fortunately, the developers at Firefox seem to have adopted the Windows philosophy that I prefer in maximizing Windows. So clicking the green button in Firefox, if you're coming from Linux or from Windows, will make the window go full screen. There's no extra buttons you have to hold down in order to make this happen. You just click one button and it goes full screen. You click the green button again and it takes you back to the position where it was before. So there's no BS in Firefox 3 at least. Firefox 2 is a little bit different. It changes the behavior. But when they went to Firefox 3, they made it a little more rational in behavior and that clicking the green button really maximizes your window. Once you move beyond the craziness of maximizing Windows in OS X, you then have to focus on an individual application at times. In Windows, this is accomplished by maximizing and minimizing Windows to the taskbar. And in OS X, you can minimize applications to the dock as well. Doing so will bring about the genie effect, and it's a nice piece of eye candy to show off to your friends. The problem is, though, is that once a window is minimized and brought down to the dock, there is no consistent way of bringing these minimized windows back to the foreground. If I go over to Terminal, for instance, hit the Window menu, you'll see that it does give me the option to hit Command-1 to bring Terminal back to the forefront. So if I choose Command-1 from Terminal, it'll restore the Terminal window back from the dock. But if I switch over to Camino, for example, show the window me menu, there is no shortcut key available to restore Camino from the dock. So if I hit Command-1 with Camino as my active application, nothing happens. If I hit Command-Tilde, again, nothing happens. So there is an inconsistency in restoring applications from the dock once it's minimized. 
Apple's solution to focusing on an individual application is to hide every other application. And this turns out to work surprisingly well. If you click on the name of a program that you're working with, you have the option to either hide that specific app or to hide every other application. So for example, if I hit Command H in Activity Monitor, it'll hide that application put it to the background and you won't see it. If I want to bring it back again, all I have to do is command tab back to activity monitor and it'll bring that window back to the front. A good shortcut that I like to use most of the time is to click over to the finder for instance. And if I want to just go straight to my desktop without using expose, I can hide all other application windows all at once by hitting Option Command H and that'll hide every window and I have clean access straight to my desktop. So it's really very efficient to getting rid of all of the clutter. And once again if you want to go back to working with your individual apps you can just Command Tab and go back to working with whatever application you want to work with. Finally, when it comes to launching programs or finding documents on your hard drive there are two ways to go about doing that. First, if you have a newer machine with Leopard pre-installed, a spotlight search is really the quickest and easiest way to find things on your hard drive. All you have to do is hit Command Space, and from there you can initiate a spotlight search to launch applications. In this instance, I'll find iMovie, and from there it'll just show up, and in Leopard, hitting the Enter key will automatically launch iMovie HD. If you're using an older version of the OS, such as Tiger or Panther, Spotlight is a little bit slower, and it's not as effective as an application or document finder. So what I do when I use Tiger, for instance, is I use the shortcuts. If I want to go straight to my Applications directory, I just hit Command-Shift-A, and it'll bring up my Applications folder. If I want to go to Utilities, I hit Command-Shift-U, that'll take me to Utilities. If I want to go to my home directory, that'll be Command Shift H, and that'll take me home. By default, hitting Command N will take you to your home directory window, and from there you can just navigate to whatever directory you want to find. If you're working with a large directory with a bunch of documents, for instance, and you want to go straight to a file or document, you can just hit the beginning letter of the file you want to find. So when in this example, if I want to go straight to my Firefox 3.01 source code, I can just hit the F button and it'll highlight that specific document. And from there I can just open it up and work with it. So there are certain ways that you can work with the Finder and older versions of OS X if you bought a secondhand Mac and if you don't have Leopard on your hard drive. And I find that for day-to-day -day use that seems to work really well with navigating the finder and getting to the things that I need to work with. So those are just some general tips that might help you make the switch from Windows to OS X go a little more smoothly. Now this might be the beginning of a series of videos aimed more towards novices and switchers. And if you'd like to see more of that, let me know in the comments and I'll try and accommodate you. Or if you want me to go into more hardcore technical related videos, I got a couple of ideas uh, about that as well. For example, I can define what an API is and look at the differences between Carbon versus Cocoa. Or I can look at 32 versus 64-bit CPU architectures and the software that's going to be needed in order to support that. So I can do really uh, technical related videos or I can do it more towards the novices. It really depends on what you guys would like to see. Once again, just let me know in the comments. I'll try and keep up on the comments and make my decision based upon your feedback. Alright, so that's about it. Peace.